Hello everyone on Women Dialogues. I am with you again, Dr. Shashi Goel, with new episode with our new speaker, Ruth from Suriname. And she worked in various places all around the globe, Netherlands and many more. And she's having her own company more than last 20 years. And we will get to know more from Ruth about her work, about her life journey and all. So let's start. Welcome Ruth on Women Dialogue platform. Thank you, Shashi. I'm very honored to be here. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. So uh, let me start by asking about your life, a uh, bit of about your life and Take us back to the early days of your career, your life. How did you figure out what was important to you and how did you approach going after it? Um, okay, so the, the early stages, and I was born here in Suriname. Uh, Suriname is a, a country on the northern uh, coast of South America. It's above uh, Brazil. And I was born here, and as a child, as a really young child, I went with my mother, we moved to the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. And when I was six years old, so my mother met uh, her current husband, so the man who raised me as, my, as his own child, even though he isn't my biological father. Uh, mm -hmm. He was working, and they met there when, when we moved there, and he was working uh, in the shipping business. Okay. So he was working in Saudi Arabia for uh, for a long time, and then in uh, when I was six years old, they got married, and then um, my mother and I also moved to Saudi Arabia. So as a child, I mm -hmm. uh, lived for almost a year in uh, in the Middle East, mm -hmm. and uh, as a child, that was that was great. You know, it's always good weather. You can play outside, and uh, yeah, it mm -hmm. was nice. And then we came back. We stayed for a short time in uh, in the Netherlands, and then we moved to Suriname, my mm -hmm. country of birth, where we lived for five years, and then we went back to the Netherlands. Uh, mm -hmm. And after more than twenty years, I moved back to Suriname in two thousand fifteen. So that is mm -hmm. a little bit my life. But in the Netherlands, I have studied, uh, and I have studied to become a postural movement therapist. That is. That is a study that is only in, uh, available in the Netherlands and in Norway. Uh, mm -hmm. So what, what you do as a therapist is you work with people who have all kinds of complaints from their neck, their back, uh, and everything. And we, we uh, treat them, our patients, to use their bodies better and to become aware of what they, how they are using and moving their bodies so that they um, that the complaints of their back and their necks, et cetera, become less and their mm -hmm. posture improves. Mm -hmm. So that is the studies that I did, uh, Sashi. But during uh, that studies, uh, psych uh, psychology, um, psychology sorry, is a very big part of it. Psychology, mm -hmm. neurology, pathology, anatomy. Uh, so mm -hmm. I was very much interested in the medical uh, aspect, but especially in psychology of humans. Mm -hmm. um, so after I graduated and started to work, I uh, did a lot of courses in coaching, uh, training, uh, leadership in the end. So uh, in 2007, I sold my practice and I uh, started my coaching business, coaching and training business. So from 2007, I am only working as a trainer and a coach um, mm -hmm. and especially uh, training and coaching women uh, to become the better version of them, the best version of themselves. Mm -hmm. yeah, so that's what I did in the Midlands, and I'm also doing that here uh, next mm -hmm. to other consultancy work. Yeah. So that's wow, a little that's bit about who I am. Wonderful, wonderful. And I, I love the way you experience different parts of the world in your life. And I, I believe you... While traveling around the world, you de definitely develop a lot of your own leadership and own way of uh, doing your work. So uh, what are your core leadership values and how do they influence how you show up in your personal, professional and community settings? My values, you ask? 
Yeah. yeah. So um, what uh, what my most important values are are, are authenticity. Um, I live I live or at least I do my best to live according according to the Ubuntu philosophy from South Africa, uh, the mm-hmm. Nelson Mandela plus to the world. And Ubuntu mm-hmm. really really is about being authentic. Uh, get rid of your ego, uh, be honest, um, uh, have respect. So respect is very important, but Mm -hmm. especially be honest and be authentic and Mm -hmm. show people who you are uh, at all times because uh, that keeps me grounded. I I always say it's, it's not easy for me to tell a lie and why not? Because I forget I speak to so many people, so I always like I, I better tell the truth because otherwise I don't know anymore what I mm-hmm. have been talking about. So honesty is uh, is a very important value for me and uh, respect also. And I also do that in my work uh, mm-hmm. and in my friendships and family relationships, other re- relationships. Uh, if I cannot speak my truth, if I can, if I cannot um, genuinely be who I am. Then, mm-hmm. then you're not the right person for me to connect with. That's, uh, and some people don't like it, but you know, I cannot, I can, I cannot live, uh, or I cannot interact with people who are not honest. Right. Um, and of course, yeah, if everybody, everybody tells a little lie here and there, but I'm really talking about big stuff. I am a, I am a communicator. I like, love communicating. It's my job. It's my work. I speak uh, a lot. Um, and I want to speak my truth always, and I mm-hmm. am really um, challenging people to mm-hmm. always also always speak the truth. It's not always easy mm-hmm. um, because sometimes it's, people are afraid, and mm-hmm. and of course in some countries you are not allowed even to speak the truth. So I am fortunate that I live in a, in a country where I am free to speak truth that I want um, mm-hmm. and that's what I'm doing and I don't uh, mind who I'm speaking to if it's a government official or if it's the neighbor mm-hmm. um, I will speak the truth this is a very important value for me yeah 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 that's so true and I, I love the way as you said but as you mentioned about like being a truthful person sometimes you face challenges so a part of uh, you know being truthful and what other way you find challenges or uh, some kind of ups and downs in your career or in your life? Um, well, we are women and we are talking about women dialogues. Um, being a woman in this world is not uh, not easy, and mm-hmm. especially being an ambitious woman. Um, mm-hmm who wants to achieve things and who wants to change things, um, it's not always easy. So, um, and that combined with speaking the truth, um, I don't know if we are, I think the women are ready to, to see the change, uh, mm-hmm. that we can speak more uh, about what we want and about what we want to achieve. But I don't know if the world is ready yet. And on mm-hmm. the other hand, Women all over the world, like we, are connecting now. You are in the Middle East. I am in South America. Um, this internet thing makes it easier for us to connect together and to take uh, take on the challenges together. Uh, in my during my career, uh, especially when I was in the Netherlands, I am uh, I am an outspoken uh, woman. I'm 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 rather extrovert. Um, it, you could you could feel, and that is also here in the uh, in Suriname where I live, that uh, it's not always appreciated if you as a woman are very outspoken. Uh, mm. And it's sad that it's still like that. Um, mm. But you know, it, it didn't it didn't I didn't let it hold me back. Uh, mm. But it was it was um, it cost me a lot of energy most a lot of the times. Uh, but mm-hmm. still, I kept fighting always to let my voice be heard, um, even though it was not always easy. Um, yeah. I'm sorry for the background noises. I'm in the in the hotel lobby here. 
Um, so I hope you don't hear the people talking too so much. But um, yeah, so that, that has been challenging. Purely being a woman and being an outspoken woman uh, with ideas, with ambition. Uh, yeah, it has cost me a lot of energy. And still, I, I, I push through. I, I um, gather people around me, men and women, who have the same vision uh, on some things. Mm -hmm. And you get together with, with them. Because if you do it together, an Ubuntu prophet, I love this prophet, an, an African Ubuntu prophet says, if you want to go fast, go alone. And if you want to go far, go together. And uh, I, since I learned about this uh, prophet, it's always in the back of my head. And I'm, I'm looking for people, really looking for people that I can work together with uh, because we have the same vision and the same mission about, uh, on something. Yeah. So uh, it doesn't really matter on what is it about uh, rebuilding my country, what I am doing right now, or is it about women issues. Uh, you have to find people who can support you, who want to support you, and who want to work alongside with you to overcome mm -hmm. all the obstacles that you might uh, run into. Because if you're together, it's easier. It makes it lighter, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I, I really uh, love the way that you said about this Ubuntu, uh, you know, philosophy of your bringing about that. Uh, and I, I hope you, and I, I believe many of other, or, you know, like me, audiences and all, they would love to hear more about. So tell us more about this philosophy about which you follow and you believe uh, so deeply about this Ubuntu. Yeah. Oh, the, the Ubuntu philosophy is a, it's a South African philosophy of uh, connection, I call it always, if I want to explain it in an easy way. Uh, Nelson Mandela, who was born and raised in South Africa, uh, taught the world about Ubuntu. When he, he was locked up for years and years and years, over 30 years. Mm -hmm. when, he, when he was freed in, uh, I think, in the 90s, 91 or 93, uh, when he was free, he didn't say, well, uh, now I hate all the white people. He said, no, because I am uh, living accordingly to Ubuntu, I have um, the power of forgiveness. And that's mm. a strong thing. I don't have it yet. I'm being honest here. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't, uh, I am working on forgiving uh, uh, people. Um, I, I do, sometimes I succeed and sometimes it's very hard still. Um, because the ego is still in the way, but I'm working on it. I'm learning. But when Nelson Mandela came out of Robben Island, uh, out of the prison, he said, I need to, we need to work together. And people said, yeah, are you going to work together with the people who also locked you up? Mm -hmm. And he said, yes, because we, my goal is a united and beautiful and prosperous South Africa. And mm -hmm. so he was keeping his goal in mind. Mm -hmm. And he set his own ego and his own sorrows aside. Mm -hmm. and he started working. And that for me is so powerful because uh, the mm -hmm. way uh, I was brought up in the Netherlands is like if mm -hmm. somebody does you wrong, um, you either take revenge or you never speak to the person again or whatever. And um, Ubuntu is the opposite. Ubuntu is about community. Mm -hmm. uh, Ubuntu is about respect, about mm -hmm. reconciliation about mm -hmm. forgiveness, mm -hmm. um, you know, about authenticity. So mm -hmm. when I learned about Ubuntu in 2012, that was during a women's workshop in, uh, in the Netherlands uh, mm -hmm. on a Sunday, I went, I went to that networking event and there was a lady giving a workshop about Ubuntu, the power of African thinking, because mm -hmm. Ubuntu is not only in South Africa, it's mm -hmm. in the whole of the African continent. It has different names everywhere. But um, since I come from a country and a culture here in Suriname, uh, we are, um, a lot of us are descendants from, uh, from African people who were made into slaves in, the, in history. So mm -hmm. a lot of the culture was preserved here. So when I was in that workshop in 2012, I recognized so many things of my culture uh, mm -hmm. that I really felt like I was home. So the Ubuntu, um, philosophy really fits in how I was raised within my Surinamese uh, culture. 
uh, mm-hmm. taking care of each other. In my youth, uh, Sashi, when I grew up here in Suriname, uh, the neighbor was not the neighbor, the neighbor was your aunt. Yeah, so they became family. And that's uh, that's uh, the essential aspect. And we took care of each other. Uh, if somebody was sick, they would bring food. Uh, if your mother didn't have time, or some of the neighbor would say, "Oh, you, you can bring her to me. I will watch her." And, and that community spirit and the community sense is also an Ubuntu aspect. And um, you know, Ubuntu also says, "I am because we are. Mm-hmm. We are individuals. Yes." Yeah. But we are also, as humans, part of the bigger community, the global yeah. community. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we as women, I can be a woman here in South America, and you are a woman in the Middle East. And when we connect, we will find out that we have a lot of things in common, even though yeah. we are also different. Yeah, and that is what we're going to teach us. We are all mm-hmm. connected. We are all yeah. connected in this world. If something happens uh, in the Middle East or something happens in the in the northern part of the world, it can have an impact on me here in the south mm-hmm. because we are all connected. Yeah, yeah, that's so powerful, and that's so powerful yeah. and so uh, much having importance in our individual and as well as you said in as a community in our life. And I think it it applies on uh, not only particular individual. It applies on each and every human, as you said, because it's it it takes us as a global. Uh, in, but while keeping us individual, it takes us as a global as well. So that is something we all need mm-hmm. to learn, and it is so powerful. Yeah, I like that philosophy. Yeah, we we should really we should yeah we should really uh, keep it in mind because. Um, again, I say we are all individuals, but we are not alone. We don't stand alone. What I do affects others, and when you yeah. become aware of that, uh, you are uh, getting more conscious of the actions that you take and the words that you say. Mm-hmm. Uh, and at least that has happened to me and a lot of other people that I have trained in this Ubuntu uh, philosophy. I did the Ubuntu leadership course also. For a year, so uh, in 2013, and um, you know, I am because we are. I mm. am because we are, and especially as women in this world, we should always keep that in mind that we are sisters everywhere. Mm. We have a lot more in common than we are different. Mm. So why not look at what do we have in common, mm. and how can we learn? From our yeah. differences and connect together and build from there. Yeah, yeah, that's that's so good. And uh, as as you are talking about this, your Ubuntu leadership program. So uh, I just would like to know how uh, it works, how in leadership and in your uh, profession, this Ubuntu philosophy works, and if you have any. Uh, you know, story or any example where you feel like you really touch those lives, uh, we would love to hear those. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, since I since I uh, came into contact with the Ubuntu philosophy, I have learned more about it. I have read more about it, and I have started to uh, implement it in a lot of trainings and speeches, motivational speeches that I uh, that I did. I did Ubuntu workshops. Ubuntu master classes. I uh, wrote about Ubuntu in a book um, to to teach people more about it. Um, yeah, I, I did a lot of things with it. And now recently, I have started. Well, my website is we are rebuilding it now. Um, it should be finished in a week. But um, last January, I did finally. I worked uh, a year to to get it done. Uh, I organized the Ubuntu Leadership Virtual Summit. Uh, Now we are not able to travel, so we are Mm -hmm. doing a lot of things virtually. So Mm -hmm. I uh, um, started the Ubuntu Leadership Virtual Summit, and it was such a nice process, Sash, because uh, it took me a year, almost a year and a half, to arrange everything. So I found Mm -hmm. the speakers. 
uh, I formed a whole group of speakers. Uh, Ingun is in it, uh, Tabello is in it, uh, Mireille is in it, a lot of uh, ladies from uh, Female Wave of Change because Female Wave of Change uh, is of course an organization that also brings women well, together worldwide. Ubuntu yeah. is not only for women, uh, mm -hmm. it's not only for women, it's for everybody in the world. But we did the Ubuntu Leadership Virtual Summit last January and it was amazing. It was so amazing. We were with people from five continents, uh, trainers, uh, speakers, and uh, participants. And uh, it took seven hours. It was a mm -hmm. whole day. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, we speak about Ubuntu. We had spoken word. We had inspirational speaking. We had a training. We had speeches. Uh, and it took seven hours. But as you can ask people, it was like this. It was mm -hmm. like this. The day was over. Because yeah. it was so interesting and it was so from different perspectives, different angles, different languages, different countries, uh, different cultures, that the, the day was like, whoop, seven hours was gone. So uh, within now, now and two weeks, the recording will be available on Vimeo, so people can uh, go to Vimeo and find it there. We are working on uh, the, the recording. So uh, this is how I implement Ubuntu in my life and in my work. Um, mm -hmm. It's a very important uh, part of what I do and what I want to teach people. That mm -hmm. if we, if we, so in my book, let me say that, if I, in my book, I made the connection between the Western individuality, because mm -hmm. in the Western world, uh, people are brought up with, uh, I am an individual and I am important. It's I, 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 I. Uh, so they will really put the emphasis on that you have to develop as an individual. Uh, but in the African uh, philosophy, it's not so more, not so, um, uh, not so much emphasis on the I, but more on the we. Mm -hmm. So from I to we, and this is uh, the connection that I try to make in my book, Sexy Leadership, that uh, to connect that. And it's always good to know um, who you are as an individual. It's very important to know who you are as an individual and uh, what you have to offer to the world. But from there is, okay, so now I know who I am and now I know um, all my talents and what, uh, what I am good at, but how can I serve the community from there? Mm -hmm. yeah. Which community do I want to serve? Yeah, because that's also leadership to make choices. You cannot you cannot serve all communities. Uh, that would be too much. Uh, but you have to make a choice. So I am choosing uh, women and my country to give my my expertise, my talents, my 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 creative brain to. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's also Ubuntu. So how to put um, Ubuntu in practice? And the coming year. Yeah. Uh, we will, I will offer uh, more webinars, four, four webinars about Ubuntu with four different speakers. I will be one of the speakers. And in June, we have a half day uh, summit. And then mm -hmm. next year, January, we have the big summit again. So yeah. and this is to spread, to spread Ubuntu globally. Yeah. Wow, wow. Uh, I can feel that little bit Ubuntu uh, philosophy and I, I feel like it's uh, definitely, as you said, it is from South Africa and in, in all over in Africa continent, but similar kind of philosophy uh, in other cultures. Like if I, if I remember in Indian culture also, they, they do have this similar kind of concept having, uh, you know, uh, I plus V, you know, they try to uh, have their V concept like more having togetherness, having care, uh, careful and being kind to others. So I can, I can feel, yes, this is uh, some way I can relate through that. Uh, but as you was talking about your book, and I, I believe you have published your book, and as your book title is Sexy Leadership. So, yeah, yes. yeah, wonderful. That's beautiful. Yeah. So, as, as you kept the names, uh, sexy leadership, and you talk about this Ubuntu 
and you work a lot of with the uh, leaders to and work with the women to develop their leadership qualities. So tell us about your book and how you decided particular this name, what is all about, and what kind of tools and techniques you uh, put into your book. Yeah. Tell us a bit more about. It. Yes. Yes, I will. Um, before I go there, I have to tell you a little bit about my history, that I had a, a, a company when I was working in the Netherlands. I had my company for almost 10 years. Mm -hmm. And then in 2013, in 2013, I lost my, I lost my company uh, because I was working with a, a, um, a big governmental company who sent me clients. Mm -hmm. uh, but then they, they got another policy and uh, I didn't get any more clients. So within six months, I lost my company. Uh, and, and you can imagine that if you have a, 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 a company, you make a lot of money, um, you know, you're always busy, you, have, uh, you bought your house, you have your car and everything, and then you lose, you lose it all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. It's like a big blow. You know? I, was, I was devastated. I cried for two months. Um, I couldn't do anything. <laughs> and that's not me. I'm, I'm always somebody who has a solution for some for everything. Uh, but I was really, really knocked out. And mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it caused so much stress to, to try to keep the company alive. I, yeah. uh, you know, I didn't make any more uh, money because I didn't get any more clients. But yes, I had, of course, my expenses. So, um, yeah, in the end, I ended up with nothing. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was in 2013, May 2013. And I cried for two months. And then I realized how important community is because I had my friends and my family who supported me and who helped mm -hmm. me, who, mm -hmm. who took me off the ground and mm -hmm. said, come on, use your talents and don't give up and stop crying because it won't help you. Um, and what are you going to do now? So from then, uh, after I stopped crying, I started to coach myself. I was thinking, okay, so Ruth, you lost that company. Okay, after 10 years, it's, it's hard, but you, are, you still have you and you are still healthy and you are still alive. So what are you going to do? So I started coaching myself. So what am I good at? And what is everything that I know? And... Um, what, how, what impact do I want to make? What choices do I have now? Uh, because yeah. you know, I have a new beginning. And mm -hmm. so I started coaching myself. And then I started my, uh, I already had started my coaching company next to the other company, but it was still small. Mm -hmm. And then I started to think, okay, so I have that coaching company. I always wanted to be more, go more into leadership coaching and training. And mm -hmm. uh, what am I going to do? So that's when I started, my creativity came back. I started to write my concepts and everything and everything. So within six months, I was in a much better shape than I was in May 2013. Mm -hmm. And then in the beginning of 2014, I thought, hey, I have to write it down because I have to write down what I did because I can help other people with it. And that's how yeah. I started to write, to write. I was... Googling, how do you write a book? <laughs> because I didn't know how to write a book. And uh, so I, find, uh, I found a Dutch lady uh, who, 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 were, who was teaching people uh, how to write a book in two months. And that's what I did. I started and in March and in May, the book came out. Uh, and why is it called sex leadership? It's called sex leadership because you can imagine when uh, I was down, when I was down on the ground, when I was crying and, and devastated because I lost my income and I, I was yeah. so afraid actually, that I would lose my house, that mm -hmm. I couldn't pay the mortgage anymore, uh, that was my only goal. My only goal was I have to get myself back on my feet because I want to keep my house. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to lose my house because otherwise, where would I live? Mm -hmm. um, so, that was, so that was my big goal, to keep mm -hmm. my house to do things that I really, really liked and loved. So I, that was my biggest combination. Back then, of course, I thought my life is not sexy anymore. I cannot go out to dinner anymore. I don't have the money. Uh, you know, I cannot buy new clothes. You know, women stuff. But 
that those things are important for us. For us yeah, well, they were important for me. So I didn't find my life sexy anymore. The stress really made me gain weight. If I am stressed, I don't lose weight, I gain weight. So I didn't feel sexy anymore. So I didn't, I didn't feel sexy anymore. My life wasn't sexy anymore for me. And when I started writing, I didn't have a title. I knew it was about leadership and I knew I wanted to write a book to uh, help people get back on their feet again and to find their passion and their purpose. Uh, I knew that I wanted to write about that. So right. then during the writing process, mm -hmm. I thought, hey, but this feels good. This gives good energy. And this feels sexy. I just, you know, I, I just came up, really, I just came up with it from, hey, sexy leadership. Uh -huh. Sexy leadership. How to make your life attractive again for you. Yeah. Because if you find your life attractive and your life mm -hmm. gives you positive energy, mm -hmm. then you are going to radiate that as a, as a woman, as a human, as a man also. So because this book is not for women specifically, it's for everybody. Yeah. So, yeah. so this is where the title comes from. You mm -hmm. know, everybody knows. If, if, if uh, something is sexy, we want it. We want to buy it. Like these mm -hmm. earphones, I bought them a month ago. And I, I just like them. I saw them online and they're like, hey, I like the color. That's also sexy to me. Sometimes you see a car and you think, wow, that car looks really, really nice. And I want to buy that car. Or uh, clothes or a book or food can also mm -hmm. be sexy. Yeah. Yeah. Sexy is not sexual. Right. Per se. Sexy mm -hmm. is about positive energy. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, things that have a positive impact. So, mm -hmm. and um, and back then in 2014, things were happening in the world that mm -hmm. I thought, you know, these world leaders, I don't find them merely inspiring. Mm -hmm. uh, because it's also, if you have a sexy leader, mm -hmm. that is somebody who inspires you to do better because mm -hmm. you see that they are also um, doing better and, get, and yeah. getting the best out of themselves. So this mm -hmm. is what sexy leadership is about. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is how it started, right? And this is why I chose the title. Uh, yeah. And in the book, I work with five steps. Mm -hmm. The five steps of sexy leadership. And step mm -hmm. one is know your smart. Know what is everything that you have in your, in your head. All the knowledge right. that you have. Because yeah. um, if we talk about freedom, if we talk about, um, in women's cases, if we talk about abuse or whatever, the stronger you are in your head, if you know what you have here, nobody can take that away from you. This is always yeah. yours. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So keep your mind set on what you want, because yeah. whatever people do to you, whatever people yeah. do to you, they cannot take this away. This is yours. So you have to know what is in there. That yeah, is, yeah, that that's that's very uh, important thing when you are talking about, and when you are talking about like this is the way how the title came up, and it is about how you are ha having abilities to attract or to make yourself those positive vibes to create those leadership qualities for self and for as well as other. So when we are talking about these, uh, you know, uh, impressive, impactful, attractive leadership qualities and which we are calling, uh, which you are calling as a sexy leadership. And uh, I think it's very unique and a uh, very attractive name. So what way uh, you do you feel when you are working with women, what kind of qualities and what kind of ways or challenges uh, they have to overcome to develop that? Yeah, and it's so, it's so great that you asked, Sashi, because I just started uh, last week with my new 12-week uh, course for uh, mm -hmm. women, and it's called Women Dare to Excel. Because mm -hmm. what we, 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 we as women, what I really think of women, and it's women from all over, because I speak to women from all kinds of countries and cultures, but we do have a lot in common, as I said before, we have our natural leaders, most of them. We are natural leaders. We yeah. are capable of taking care of, of like whole families 
Uh, and next to that, we can take care of businesses and we can take care uh, of um, uh, politics, everything. We are natural leaders. Mm -hmm. The only thing is, we don't always believe it. And we are keeping ourselves small. Mm -hmm. And we are listening to people who put negative things in our heads. Yeah. This is why I said that one of yeah. such leadership is know you're smart, know what you are, know what you know, and mm -hmm. believe in what you know, believe in mm -hmm. the knowledge that you have. And yeah. uh, step two is um, know your strength. We are, mm -hmm. we as women, we are strong. Um, we are surviving a lot of things mm -hmm. and we are still going strong. And yeah. while, we, while we are going, we are taking others with us. And mm -hmm. we as women should believe more in our natural strength, in our natural uh, mm -hmm. capabilities. Because yeah. we have that. Only in a lot of cultures, and mm -hmm. really worldwide, Western cultures, Middle Eastern cultures, Southern cultures, uh, up north in the world, deep down south, we women hear the same things as girls. We have to be mm -hmm. mothers, we have to be quiet, mm -hmm. we have to be nice and sweet, don't talk too much. You know, be a nice little girl and then everything will be all right. Mm -hmm. and, and yeah, I know, as, as you, yeah. yes, as you, as you said that uh, women are born leaders because as you explained it very nicely and you touched all the aspects that from very beginning and from day one, they know how to handle themselves, how to handle their all surroundings, whether it comes to their work, their profession, their family, their and their community and to they have those born qualities about leadership and i think that's very strong statement uh, to create that sense of, in the women that yes they are they are born leaders so at the same time like i always ask uh, to my speaker on this platform that why do you feel women dialogue is so important for all of us Oh, I, <laughs> that's a beautiful question. Why do I feel, because so dialogue is important because if we speak to somebody else, we get to learn about the other and the other gets to learn about us and that gives better understanding. So then from there, better connection. And then women dialogue is even more important because as I was saying, we are now in 2021 and still, little girls around the world hear the same thing. You have to be modest, you have to be quiet, you have to be sweet and nice, you have to be, you know, don't show a lot of yourself and don't uh, talk too much, don't talk too loud. And I'm like, they are silencing us still. And it's mm -hmm. all over the globe, it's mm -hmm. worldwide. So when we as women start talking to each other, and this is why on my website there will also be the Ubuntu forum so that people can speak to each other online, men and women. Yeah. Uh, because if we speak to each other, uh, we chat with each other, we are in a forum, then we understand each other better. And then we yeah. make better connections and better communities. And mm -hmm. if we yes. better communities of people who think the same, mm -hmm. then we can create positive change together in this world. Mm -hmm. so why are women dialogues important? Yes, because we women, it's important that we speak to each other, get to know each other, and see how we can work together to make this world better for women and girls, and from there for everybody. Because I, who said it? Wasn't it also Mr. Mandela who said that? If you uh, yeah, that, that is, it's a saying. If you teach, uh, yeah, teach I, can, man, I can understand. If you teach a man, you teach a man. Yeah, right? If you teach a man, you teach a man. If you teach a woman, you teach the whole village. And yeah. this is why women dialogues are so important and why I'm, I am so honored today to, or that you asked me uh, in your show as a, as a, as a guest. Uh, because yes, we, we, we as women, if we connect, and we work together, 
we can change this world for the better. Thank you. That's so beautiful and driving message. I love it. I love it. And, and once again, thank you so much, Ruth, for coming on this platform. But before finishing, uh, one of the last thing, uh, what is your message to our audience to learn from your life, from your experiences, what, what um, yeah, what is my message? So I have lived in different, in three different countries in my life. I have uh, traveled to a lot of different countries because I love people. And so my message would be, if it's possible for you, try to travel when we can travel again, when this COVID thing is over. And it, now we cannot travel physically, but try to connect online with people. Connect, 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 and speak to each other. Uh, because again, if we speak to each other respectfully, equally, and we exchange our ideas and our cultures and our perspectives, then we will build this global community and change the world. That is, that is the only message I have for, for years already, and especially for women, if you need help, or if you want to ask something, or if you want to know something, find somebody who can help you. Maybe that, not that person can help you, but they know somebody who can help you further. Ask for help. Leader, this is what I learned in my leadership uh, training in, in, in Barcelona, Spain. Leaders ask for help. And we women, again, are natural leaders and dare to ask for help to become an even better leader. So uh, grow from good to great to excellent. Wow, 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 wow. I love that. Ask for help, don't get hesitant because as women are born leader and leaders uh, ask for help without any hesitation. That's, that's so powerful and I'll... I, I feel like, yes, that's the key takeaway, key message takeaway from this platform for today's episode. And once again, thank you, Ruth, for coming here. I'm so grateful that you are joining us. And thank you all viewers for watching, listening, learning, and growing. I wish you all to keep growing together. For this, please subscribe and share our channel. And if you would like to get connect with Ruth, Please find the details in the description below as well. Thank you.